What's up, guys? I am here with Miodrag Milenkovic, Serbia's number one affiliate marketer and organic growth specialist. Uh, he is going to talk to us today a little bit about affiliate marketing and how to... Uh, is it Facebook groups that you specialize in, like growing a Facebook group? Because I know you said organic uh, Facebook traffic, I guess is the best way to say it, but how would you define it? Well, you, the main thing you can use, I mean, yes, groups are definitely one thing to leverage, but you can make money with just your normal, like casual Facebook profile. That's what I've been doing for months. I do have a group, but more. I actually made more money with my profile plus messenger it's kind of like similar same thing but you can leverage other people's groups for the traffic i guess we'll dive into that but the main way where you convert them like you get them to your profile you can may or may not add them to a group as well but it's usually your profile and messenger in combination that works wonders okay so then um i guess so you said you can do it through your main profile also. Does that mean that, because I've heard a lot of people say that if you want to, you know, you go to a Facebook group, you add value, you like post something interesting there, and then when people click on your profile, it's like a funnel, right? And it says like, my name, I'm Mio Drag, and I help, you know, business owners reach five figures a month, whatever, some shit like that. Is that, is that what you're talking about? Yes, I guess that's your way on Facebook, that's your way of funneling people. You can have, like for example, I do have a Facebook group in my bio. Uh, you can have your lead magnet, you can have whatever you want in your bio, like describing what you do in short, uh, like your target audience, and then add like where you want to funnel them to. My, my go-to place is usually Facebook group, because it allows me to nurture audience, to provide value, to gather email, and grow email lists at the same time. And even if you're an affiliate, I don't know if your audience knows what affiliate marketing is, but even as an affiliate, or especially as an affiliate, you wanna build your own brand. Since you're already selling other people's products, it's like really important to, to brand yourself. Okay, so then, so you said you, you wanna push them to the Facebook group. So then does that mean because I know, does that mean you're not sending them to a landing page to give them a lead magnet? You're just sending them straight to the Facebook group? Or is it like, get this lead magnet and then you sneak the Facebook group in on them later? Or how does it work? So you can have lead magnets inside your group. So you're like, you enter the group and you get the lead magnets. And I make I make it a must to, to leave an email if they want to enter. Mm -hmm. And I have like private interviews, trainings, like a lot of loot magnets inside one group. So once they join, they are eligible to, to pretty much everything. So that's the reason why I ask for, for their email. Uh, I even say like, if you're recently mm -hmm. offended, you can feel free to unsubscribe. Like I will send you mess, uh, emails. Uh, but that's like you, you put the, I mean, you can do it the other way around. Like, if your main objective is to build email list, you can have a landing page and then ask them for a group. Or I just put land whatever lead magnet is. I put it in the Facebook group, and I can do like, oh, I'm doing a private training inside my Facebook group. Now, this sometimes you can create entire lead magnet and landing page around it. What I can do is just do it in a group, and it's already a lead magnet because it not only gives me their email. But as you know, like there are three questions right. to ask people upon they enter. So I also do a mini research and know, like have an idea of what are they doing, where are they at, what are their goals, and I take their email address. So it's like pretty powerful. Okay. So you said before we, before we started the actual interview, you said that uh, you think that affiliate marketing is the best I guess best choice for people who are beginners because you don't have to manage any of the stuff with your own product. You don't have a brand that you need to take care of. There's no headaches. What would you say, give us like the bird's eye view of what you think would be, I don't want to say the best strategy, but like a simple to execute strategy for a beginner who just wants to like get a little bit of experience, make a couple sales, just kind of learn the whole process. What would you say that looks like? 
Okay, do you mind if I give a little background context? Yeah, please, go ahead. Give a better, to give a better answer. So, first, yes, like I said before, we started recording. I do think that affiliate marketing is one of the best business models to start with. Not saying it's easy. Uh, I mean, there are easier ways to make money, like freelancing, you just do the service if you are skilled with something. But this gives more of a entrepreneurial style of, like, you legitimately have a business. So that's one distinction and it can be more, more passive and you can make more money. So that's one reason. Second reason, unless you are already, I don't know, a service provider, an expert in something, uh, to start with your own product can be a lot harder because you not only need to think about sales and marketing as affiliates do, but you also need to think about fulfillment, needs in a market, will it land, uh, all like uh, the support, uh, everything else that goes in that. But with affiliate products, you just need a product that resonates with what you want to sell and who you want to help it. And then you need to find people and attract them that are the right fit and that your product can help. So that's one of the reasons why I say it's the best to start with like affiliate marketing. Now, to give you more context around how, like the simple strategy that I ran across, because I've been in affiliate, I've been learning affiliate marketing for about three years. I, mind you, three years ago, it was just me realizing that this world exists. Because like three and something years ago in September, I was like, I'm working for 250 bucks a month at a time. And I was like, I need some additional income and I was like let's search online like how to make money online and this led me to all sorts of uh, avenues like I don't know type of freelancing some answering uh, some questions videos a lot of stupid things I never met a penny but in my pursuit I ran across affiliate marketing and I was like I mean it was explained to me really simply like it was like oh you just take someone else's product you have special link you put it in front of people they buy and you get commission in hindsight yes that's true but there is as you know a lot of like uh, skills and strategies and a lot of other things involved that i didn't know however it did lead me on a certain path and that start off my journey so for the first year and a half what i did was mainly I was consuming content, I was buying course after course to, to learn more and more things and I went into famous shiny object syndrome, like, oh, let's get the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, uh, almost never implemented and obviously never made money. So I guess now it's New Year, so two years ago in 2018, I want to say, uh, no, in 2019. I finally started like producing content of my own. I started my own podcast and it also led me to all these kind of things because there are a lot of ways to make money with affiliate marketing. Like you can do it with YouTube, with blogging, with Instagram, with like literally any platform. As long as you have eyeballs on it, you can make money. And I was again having the shiny object syndrome going from one thing to another to another. And what ended up happening with me having at a time like full-time job, I was working eight hours on the job and, and then like commute and then working on a business. So I had like 15, 16 hour working days for five or six months. And I was like super exhausted and I made like hundred bucks. And then I realized last year, like literally, I think around a year ago, last January, I was like, something's off. Like I'm spending this 15 hour days, like I'm exhausted and I'm not making money. And at that time, uh, it will all make sense now why I'm talking about this cause you asked me about a simple approach, which is what I learned at the time. Cause I, again, I have my podcast and at that time, I started networking with some high ticket affiliate marketers, meaning they, they sell products that are usually thousand bucks and above. What I did up until that point, I was trying to sell some reoccurring software, some cheap products like hundred bucks and less. And what and I was like sold on this passive income mentality where oh you don't have to work, you just sell reoccurring products and you're rich, whatever, like this this stupid narrative. And you're probably familiar, I see you're laughing. I, I, um, I'm listening to your story and it feels like I'm, you're talking about me. 
<laughs> so anyway, I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. That's interesting. Yeah. So I'm yeah, I'm waiting so, for the for the for the magic part. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So I was like in that mentality for two and a half years, trying all sorts of things, uh, only to end up again exhausted. And then I started interviewing these high ticket affiliate marketers, and one after another, they told me like, yeah, we just spend less time. We are on Facebook and we make like thousand bucks in a day and so on. I was like. On Facebook, you can't leverage like the passive income like you can on YouTube and blogging. And I was like against it. But again, they were making usually multiple five or six figures. And here I was like struggling for years. And I was like, something's off. Let's let's dive into it. I finally like let go of my ego and my clinging to be right because I already accumulated a lot of knowledge. Like I invested, I think, up until that point. And because I'm in Serbia and any investment is a huge investment when you work for like 300 bucks a month. I, I took like a loan from the bank a couple of times and at that, time, and at that point I was at 5,500 bucks, which was almost two years of my salary. Uh, and I was like, I don't want to invest again. But then as I was listening to them, two things that they were talking, well, three things that they were talking about were higher ticket products, because you put in less or same work and you make more money. Second things they were second thing they were preaching was having a mentor. Up until that point, I was trying to learn everything by myself, uh, from courses, from YouTube, from how tos, whatever it is. But it was by myself. So what they were emphasizing is to have someone with experience to help you through it. And I guess the third thing at the time was uh, focusing on one strategy, and namely for the high ticket, Facebook being the easiest one, because you can leverage it it's intimacy almost like with the groups and with the messenger like it's really easy to build relationships and with high ticket you kind of need to have some form of real relationship with the person before they buy like they need hmm. to trust you to kind of see an idea they, like no one's gonna throw like two thousand bucks at you if they're not sure who you are what you do and so on and so forth and facebook allows you to to showcase that and to connect with people better so I was finally sold like last February on the whole idea, okay, I'm, I'm going to get a mentor, I'm going to do high ticket affiliate marketing. So I made a pivot from low ticket reoccurring to high ticket, uh, got a mentor and what I did, because up until that point I was on too many platforms trying so many things, like the, I was on YouTube, I had my group, still have it. Uh, I was going in other people's groups, I was on Instagram, I was considering TikTok and Pinterest and I was like a mess and I had a full-time job as well. And at the time I was like, I'm cutting everything, I'm gonna leave my podcast because it's dear to me and it helped me build my brand and I'm gonna focus all my work and my business on Facebook. So I bought a program and again I didn't have money to invest into it so I had to get 50 more hundred bucks into debt. So it was like total of $7,000 into debt. And I was like, let's try this. And I went all in. And unlike the other times, I had one strategy to implement. So this is where the entire context story makes sense. You asked me for simple. So the, the reason why it's simple is, again, it's one strategy. It's just Facebook profile. So you don't, like, if, if you spend any amount of Facebook and you know kind of, like, how posting works and so on and so forth, it's really easy to, to, to figure it out. Like. Comparing Facebook algorithm to uh, like SEO on YouTube and blog, like it's the it's a different world. Like for YouTube, it, it's really hard to get your video to rank and then to see uh, will it convert and how much time will it take for it to rank and and so on and so forth. But with Facebook, like you post and usually your immediate friends or people in the group they see it right away. Mm -hmm. so you can leverage that momentum. So what I realized back then instead of chasing for passive income I should focus on active income and then when I have the money invest it into passive sources that was my idea and basically less than three months after implementing like the Facebook strategy which was just focusing on my personal profile and on the messenger with just one product so instead of promoting hmm. 15 different things I just focus on one product which was high ticket and which was helping certain kind of people in less than three months I left my job and then a couple of months later doing the same strategy made multiple five figures last year and 
to translate that into Serbian currency, I did like 10 year salary in a seven months or something like that. Wow. It, it's ridiculous. Uh, by the end of the year, I, I made a transition, so I'm more doing my own stuff now. But initially, I was doing it like with affiliate marketing and high ticket affiliate marketing the most. And the reason, because it was so simple to execute, I think that was the difference between me struggling for two years and me getting results in like a matter of months. Interesting. That's a very uh, interesting little journey right there. Um, so when you say that you were only... Okay, so, so here's one thing that I was thinking when I was listening to you. You said, and I'm sure, you know, maybe I missed something, but you said that you were focusing mainly on your personal profile on Facebook, right? So what I'm thinking is that, like, do your close personal friends really... Are they, are they like the, you know, are they the targeted audience, right? You know, you hear all this talk about, oh, you got to target your audience specifically, right? Were they a targeted audience for this high ticket offer that you were promoting? Or, I mean, were you just like spamming posts on your own Facebook page? Not spamming them, but you know, were you posting every day to your own Facebook and just hoping that like some of your friends and family would be interested? Or what was the... Like how did how did that work? You know what I mean? Because it seems like that wouldn't be really that targeted, as opposed to a specific yeah, group or right. something. So there is there is a strategy behind it that you don't, unless your friends and family are like the target audience, which in my case they weren't. You want to add strangers, if you will, and people that are alike your target audience. So, for example, another reason why Facebook is powerful is that whatever interests you have. I mean, there are a billion of users monthly on Facebook, and there are all of these groups and pages of people who are like-minded, these congregations of people. So you can go in any group, in any niche, in any industry, and you can find people interested in certain topics. So what I did now, mind you, like two years ago, I decided, because I had my old profile that I've been using like at the time for 10 years, and then I, I started the one I'm currently using in a parallel. So I was growing that one for business, another one was personal. But after some time, I, I was like, it was against Facebook's terms of services to have two personal profiles. So I had to make a decision and to cut one off, either to start posting business related stuff on the personal one and add strangers, or just ask friends and family that want to come to this one and continue here and that's what I did. I actually deleted this one and I was I just told to friends and family like I'm I'm mm. shutting this Facebook account down. I'm using this one for business. Whoever wants to they can add me. Everything is on public anyway. So I do have some friends and family, say 20, 30 people, I don't know what's the exact number. But the remaining because I'm not targeting people in Serbia, they are far from my target audience because they're really skeptic, they don't have money and so on and so forth, they're in that mindset. Uh, I usually get strangers, and strangers that have similar interests, and strangers that are in the places where my audience hangs out. And then, what I'm posting, it's not like random posting, that's now marketing, it's kind of like knowing what are the beliefs these people have, what are the vehicles they're currently trying to use to make money, why are they not working? And then conveying that through my content, like really specifically talking to these people, like, oh, you struggle with this, this, and this. I used to struggle a bit with that too. Then presenting them with my opportunity. And then why Facebook is powerful. Another reason is like we can connect with the messenger, you can get to know them. And if you get to the point of conversation, you can just. You're basically how I view myself when the time is right is as a doctor. So I listen to their problems like, I don't know, say they were like me, they were in, I used to be in like ClickFunnels groups and so on and so forth. And maybe they're like, I'm, I'm struggling with funnels, I couldn't make money. And because I was there, that was my situation, I can listen to their problems. And I can just introduce my solution like, okay, I see where you're coming from. I struggled with that too. This is what worked for me. You can check it out if you want. If you don't, 
whatever, you'll still have the problem, I'll still have the solution. So you build that relationship with them, you talk with them, you try to understand them, and then only if it makes sense, so it's not kind of like spammy, it's like if they are the right audience, if they have the right problem that your product can solve, then you can like just ask them to share to share it with them and some of them buy and because I'm doing high ticket, one of them buying usually means like depending on how expensive your high ticket product is, you can earn like $500 and up and I had many many like four figure days where I, where I earn like thousand, two thousand even my record day so far is like 3,150 bucks in a day, which was like equivalent of 10 months of my salary. So this is like where the high ticket fits, because when you're new online, you don't have a lot of traffic. So instead of trying to get all of these eyeballs, what you can do is like be much more targeted and think more quality instead of quantity, but with less sales, you can really spike your income. So with high ticket, you basically need like whatever, like all of us have, depending on where we live and what are our goals. We have like different, uh, different money goals. Like maybe you need three thousand, maybe someone needs six, maybe someone needs ten. But whatever the number is, with high ticket, it's three, six, or ten sales away away from your goal, and that's not really a, a lot. Comparing to people selling clickbait products for fifty bucks or hundred bucks and needing like constant flow of traffic which is hard even for established people let alone for newbies to to generate that much traffic consistently every month and converting them i think it's much easier to convert five people a month and have five grand than it is to convert 100 people every single month when you don't have established brand and traffic and so on and so forth yeah that's interesting so you you actually um you deleted or deactivated your your personal page and you just went with the business page and just no, kind it's of still personal profile pro, personal you can have go ahead yeah so page is the one where you run right right, right. Pro, profile i meant profile bot. i meant profile yeah uh, but personal profile yeah i deleted the old one and i created a new one but you can also just if someone maybe if someone doesn't have a lot of friends say they have two hundred friends they're not necessarily too active you can still use that one you can let friends and family know like hey from tomorrow i'm using this profile as a business one you can feel free to stay and if you don't like what you see you can feel free to go i mean we'll text each other whatever but i'm using this for business because again and i still have friends and family a lot of them like that don't even understand english like when they watch my profile it's everything on english like i'm a serbian speaker uh my native english language is not English but yeah they're over there they some maybe understand something others don't I don't care like I use it for business and that's that's it got it so um, when you're talking about you know the strategy that you have now um, are you still doing the high ticket affiliate because I know you mentioned earlier that you're like doing more of your own stuff now do you have your what, how, how much of your you know income or I guess work spent trying to make money is selling affiliate stuff versus selling your own you know coaching or, or whatever it is that you sell so I made a huge pivot a bit less than two months ago up until that point it was like hundred percent affiliate profit then I made like really hard pivot into coaching and then I extended it to my own course so mm. currently, like I would say, ninety percent of my income is from my own things, comparing to affiliate things. But that's because when you use your Facebook profile, it's usually smarter to focus on one thing and one message and one strategy, and oftentimes like one to three products. Because I can still sell both things, but it's kind of hard to cater different audiences. Like for one audience. With the high ticket affiliate program that I had, I guess it was more tailored towards beginners slash intermediate people. But with my coaching, it's definitely not for beginners. Like I try not to teach them too much into strategy. Like I found a gap in the marketplace and I'm just filling it with my coaching and course. Uh, so it's not for like someone 
just starting out wouldn't benefit that much from my coaching. I actually had to decline more than a few people for coaching and course because I was like, do you have, for example, my coaching is helping someone who already has high ticket products. So if they don't, it's not a good fit for them. Another mm. thing, my coaching is more for people that already are using Facebook profile. So if they don't, I will just tell them no. And then I can recommend them the high ticket product that helped me get to that point. So I'm like, if you don't have one, and if you don't use your profile, I would rather show you, and that this is like why I mentioned that I put mm. my like doctor hat on, like what's the problem you're having? Because if you don't have high ticket product, and if you don't use profile, I don't want to sell you this. Like there is better thing for you. I would recommend them an affiliate product. If they have a high ticket affiliate program and they have, they are using Facebook organic strategies, but they're not getting results, then I'm like, use my uh, content conversion strategy and my messaging and like the way I use content to attract those leads from my profile and turn like post readers into high ticket buyers. But that's already when they have what to sell and when they already have at least a bit of audience on their Facebook. So it's, it's a different audience and this is why I don't sell both at the same time. It's kind of like talking to different people. Yeah, that makes sense. At different stages of their journey also. So then what, it, let's say, because I know there's a lot of people out there, you mentioned ClickFunnels earlier and they really like, they do a good job of creating all this hype, like you just make one funnel and you're gonna be a millionaire, you know? Um, so I think that there's probably a lot of people out there who have a funnel and maybe they even have like a high ticket offer at the end of that funnel. Um, do you think that that is like the traditional like value ladder model of like free lead magnet, $10, whatever, $100 course, and then at the you know fourth or fifth step, you get to the $2,000, $3,000, whatever it is. Do you think that that's still, you know, according to your like experience, is that still a good um, method? Or are you saying basically just like, just skip straight to the fucking high ticket offer. Don't worry about any of this other stuff. Like the main priority should just be get the leads for the high ticket offer and sell that high ticket offer. So or, or do you think there's room for the both or like and the strategy? It would depend on the strategy you use and platform you use. I think for Facebook, I would say maybe go high, t maybe not super, depending on your definition of high ticket. If you go like thousand to three thousand five, maybe a thousand bucks, I would say you can go directly to high ticket. One of the reasons is like, again, depending on what you sell there, if, if you have like super good ascending program that you know, if I send 10 people to this low ticket thing, one will buy, I guess you can do that. If not, I would push them to high ticket. There is like this really cool strategy that I, or tactic rather, that I learned from my mentor. It's like, say you are talking with someone and they are pro, like really hot lead. What you should do instead of offering them cheaper thing is offer them higher thing thing. So for example, okay, there is there's this $2,000 program. I think it can help you out. Now, if they have money, if you did a good job, they will potentially buy and you can have your thousand dollar day. If they don't and they're like, yeah, that's great, but I don't have that money right now. Then instead of like going with low to high, you can go high to low. You can be like, yeah, I understand. I don't have, I didn't have the money either when I was starting out, like that's understandable. Well, I guess what I can offer you now is like this, but it should be really related to the high ticket one. So don't give them some totally random. It should be related to this one. It can be like, yeah, I have this like hundred bucks thing. Uh, it's not as good, obviously, as this one, but it can still help you with what you got. Or even if you have like middle ticket offer, is like, yeah, I have this five hundred, two thousand dollar thing. Then if you don't have two thousand bucks, there is this seven hundred dollar thing that's also really good, and it will also help you solve problem. And then even if they don't have that much, if you have a lower ticket one, again related to everything that you were talking about. So it, if it's Facebook organic, all three should to some extent teach it. And then you can downsell to 100 bucks. So it means getting the most out of that customer. Even, even when they don't have money, you can still earn a commission 
off of them as well. And the last stop, I guess, if they have zero money, you can push them to your group and nurture them. And month three or five down the road, when they have money or whatever, they might still buy. So you you don't want to waste leads. In other in other words, right. So um, it sounds like you know the first high ticket affiliate programs you were selling were basically were they how to make money in affiliate marketing or was it like it, it was something in the make money online niche right yeah so i uh, when i made the decision three years ago or almost three no two and a half years ago i would say i had to make a decision which industry i want to go in and i decided to make money online and affiliate marketing and this is what i stick to so it just taught a different model and different version of it and the one that worked for me and this was one of the main reasons why I further recommend it to others because when, you, when you're when you stuck with certain vehicle and you find one that works, you can go back to the old marketplace where you were stuck before and introduce new opportunity to these people over here. Okay. Um, so then when you were, you know, because there's this whole, like, you've heard the joke, I'm sure you're already making money, so it's not as relevant to you now, but like... There's this joke of like, how do you make money online? You make money online by selling courses on how to make money online, right? And that you don't have, like you well, can't- the entire make money online industry is like- Exactly. Build upon that to an extent. Right, but like, for example, the, the idea, or I guess some people might say like, I wanna be able to teach something that a regular you know business could use to be able to use those make money online strategies. Did you, um, when you were, when you were first, selling those high ticket affiliate marketing offers did you get the feeling that it was just that like the only the only reason i'm making money online is because i'm selling this course on making money online it's this like do you understand what i'm saying the uh like there did, did you ever feel like oh, maybe there's no real value in here because i'm just selling a course on how to sell courses for example I, I maybe that's not the exact strategy but so so to give you an example the the thing that I was selling was a mastermind and it taught and this is the reason why I decided to sell so yes there are some programs which I really tried not tried I stayed away from which are just making money on concept of making money I think this is what you're referring to mm -hmm. they're more like pyramid scheme programs they're like oh you just buy this and then you resell it right. right well this program contrary to that was more like teaching you how to make money overall. So they, they weren't like, oh, just sell this program and make money. They had like the entire module where, where they, were, they were talking about other high ticket products that you could sell depending on your audience. And then there is a good portion of the training where they were going into sales, sales psychology, so the tangible skill that you could actually use. It's not like resell this thing. It's like, this is how people think, this is how you should use sales, this is the mindset, these are the tactics that you use. Uh, then there was like the branding strategy, also really good one. So it's not again like, oh, just recommend our product. It's like brand yourself. Their values were like more emphasized on you building yourself instead of you just reselling the program. So the entire program and their approach aligned with my values. And I think this is really important when we choose our products that they align with our values. Because after some time I was looking for, because I got a lot of leads that were like, yeah, I don't have money for high ticket. And at the time I didn't have the low, low ticket product. And I was like, let's find something to downsell them the low ticket. And I got a lot of recommendations for products such as you described, like, oh, you, you earn 100% commission, you just resell the program. And that's like far from my ethics and values. And I never wanted to invest into one and resell it later. So I think I spent three months looking for a program and then when I found one that I could stand behind, that's when I invested into one that was giving me like middle and low ticket offers as well to complement the high ticket one that I was having. But for three months I didn't have offer because I didn't want to invest into such training. So yes, I think we should do our research and be really mindful as to what we invest in and what we put our brand and name behind because I don't personally want to be correlated with programs that are in such way. I knew also 
that I could make much more money selling those products because it's kind of like just I call this like the opportunity selling like oh this is opportunity to make money and they sell that I'm much more of a find a prog- uh, find a problem in the marketplace and try to be solution oriented so this is the solution to your problem instead of oh this is just a way for you to make money mm. so I think that's a really important distinction that people should have because usually when something is just hype like oh you just resell this to other people there's usually no tangible knowledge behind it right um so then what what advice would you like let's what advice would you give somebody let's say there's somebody who's who says okay the strategy sounds great you know, I'm going to start my new business profile on Facebook, delete my personal profile, and I'm going to try and start promoting these high-ticket affiliate um, offers, right? Um, if somebody doesn't have any experience doing that, <clears throat> and they feel maybe like, do you know what imposter syndrome is? You've heard of imposter syndrome? Yeah, so if they if they feel like, well, yeah, I'm promoting this thing, I still haven't made any money with it, like... You know, how would you, if if they're feeling some like discomfort around that, like what would you what would you recommend to them? What would you say to that person? So, has that thing worked for others? Because that's one thing. Because if you're new to something, it takes time to develop skills to get results. But it's like, what's the knowledge that I want to use? Uh, that will make sense. I don't know if car analogy, maybe I'll try with this one. Let's see if it makes sense. Like car salesmen, maybe they don't own a car, but they know enough features. Maybe they drove it over there and they know what it works. And if prospect comes and says like, yeah, I want my car to have this, this and this. And if you know these cars, meaning if you already own the product and you know what problem it solves, even if you still haven't made money but others got results and you know it solves that particular pro- problem you can still recommend it even though you don't own that Ferrari out of the that store you can still recommend it if that's what the person wants Basically, got it. like again I use this analogy a lot of the times like doctor analogy you want to listen to their problems and then if it's like you make prescription based on that so if they say yeah I had this and this problem then if you know your program and if you know that it can help them solve that problem then yes you recommend it but what a lot of people do is they recommend just to get a sale Mm. they're like yeah i don't think this would work but i can get money out of it so i'll just recommend it and i think that's kind of like unethical thing uh, unethical way to do sales so i think you you should put your focus to to the problems your customer or potential customers are experiencing and put your focus on that instead of like, did I make sales con- like with this? Because if you just join something, like it's unrealistic to expect results right out of the gate, unless right. you have like this big following already and brand and you just slam your list with an offer and you make money. And that's still how some people are marketing. Like, oh, I just joined this new opportunity and make $10,000 and they don't tell you that they have like, five years of experience yeah. <laughs> and 20,000 people on the email list and so on, like all these assets and skills they came with in the program. So the results will also really vary and they are oftentimes unrealistic unless you have consistent people who are new and are getting results after X amount of time. Okay. Um, do you do any paid ads for you know, your main offers? And if so, how would you compare that to, you know, the the organic strategy with your profile and, and your group? So I don't use any paid advertising and I don't think one should use it before they built basically a machine, something that really converts well on the back end and to the warm audience. Because if you can't sell something to warm audience that knows, like, and trust you, how are you going to sell it to cold audience over the ads? You're just going to waste more money. So it's the similar thing with funnels. And I view it as the knowledge I love to use is like gym. Uh, ads are like, <laughs> I don't know. Like steroids. Pounds that Got it. Is. Yeah, it's like it, it takes time to get there. Like when you enter the gym, you're not going to try and deadlift 
400 pounds. It doesn't mean it's impossible and it doesn't work. It's like you need to eat the right food and have fundamentals and show up for months or years for you to reach the point. So I say build your way up. Don't try to. A lot of people try to shortcut their way into paid ads, and if they don't have the basics covered, they're just gonna waste money. It's like adding fuel to non-existing source. It's the same with funnel. Like funnel just automates the process, but you need first the process. And I think this is what people, a lot of people lack. They lack the, those fundamentals. Like oh. Who are you actually selling to? What marketplaces are you targeting? What beliefs are you changing? And so on and so forth. Like those are the fundamentals. Then how are you gonna market and sell? And what strategy will you use? Then you can plug in funnel to automate parts of the process. And only then, when that entire thing, your machine works, and then you can think about ads and scaling. And a lot of people just to to try to sell something. They're like, yeah, you can get results tomorrow. You just plug in paid ads. I think. You shouldn't. I always try to tell people to focus on fundamentals first, and then build their way up. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so, what would you say to somebody who, um, let's say, you mentioned earlier how you you were on all of these platforms before, and you just basically got rid of everything except for the podcast, and then only focused on Facebook. Um, how much? time because you said you don't do any paid ads i'm assuming you're not doing solo ads or anything any other stuff like that either so then how much time in the beginning were you spending friending people or posting in groups or like messaging people you said you had a full-time job but like how much can people how much time could people expect to spend on something like that what would you recommend so one of the really powerful things that I learned in that mastermind that was teaching me the strategies was the importance of revenue generating activities. So up until that point when I was on many platforms, I was just, oh, I should do this and I would do it. It, it was kind of like random and intuitive and unstrategic. But when you have concise plan and when you have uh, revenue generating activities, when you know what are your revenue generating activities in your business for example on facebook for me those were content creation friend adding because you need like new people circulating and deleting the old one once and messenger outreach so talking to people those were my three main tasks so what i did was like whether i had one hour at a day or it was weekend that i had six or seven or eight hours or twelve I knew what were my most important things to do, it was those three things. After I do those, depending on how much time I have, I would do other stuff. If I only have one hour, I would try to do all three of these things. So I had my revenue generating activities and I would, uh, I would try to fit them within my schedule. So if I was working and I had three hours, I would put three hours into these most important things. Or two and a half and half an hour for other things. But Every business has its revenue generating activities, and I say focus on that. And this was, I, I actually think this was one of the reasons why it was much easier for me. Because before it was like, oh, let's now release a YouTube video, let's now release a podcast episode, let's make a post, let's go on IG, let's go here and there. And it was like a mess. But when I made this pivot, first big pivot that I did to Facebook Organic, and when I focused on just revenue generating activities, I think in a matter of two or three weeks, I made my first high ticket sales, uh, sale because that was the thing that drives money, like talking with people and presenting offers in front of eyeballs, content that will convert their beliefs so they're, that they're more inclined to buy and adding right people that into ecosystem because you made a good point like if you now go and post on your profile even if you have the best copy in the world it's not going to convert because people on those leads are just not targeted so adding targeted people every day r uh, putting right type of content and having right type of conversations will what will sell anything whether you do high low ticket your own pro like i use the same strategy or similar strategy and I was selling my own product. So it doesn't matter whether it's affiliate product, it's my own and I didn't have, like it was a new program. So I didn't have testimonials, I didn't have anything and I still sold it out in like two weeks without any big 
big public lunch. It was like a stealth lunch, if you're familiar with the term. Like I was just talking with some people behind the scenes. Do oh, a stealth of lunch, yeah. And close. Uh, I'm sorry, didn't hear you. Oh no, no, you're okay. You're okay. Keep going. Yeah. So I would say if they're doing Facebook, those are the three things they should focus on. Whether they have one hour or three hours. If they have more and they're done with that, then you can go a step further and do other important things. But keep your focus around revenue generating activities. I would say. Interesting, and um, because those. It seems like those three methods. There's not, you know, one of the the appeals of paid ads is that it's, it's kind of automated, right? Like you set your budget, you put up your ad, and then you press a button and you get traffic, right? But those methods that you're talking about, is there a way to automate those so that you don't have to spend as much time doing them, or is it like you just got to put the time in? You know, there's no way around it. I think we always need to in the beginning. I mean. Hell, look at Russell, he has nine figures, he run ads, and he still puts in time into his business. So I don't think That's true. there is getting away of it. That's one thing, especially like as you grow, you're gonna exclude yourself out of the business more and more, you're gonna start automating delegating. But at the beginning, I think we need to put in a lot of time and effort. Also, one thing that I love that Jacob is, my, one of my mentors is teaching, exactly with the Facebook strategy he's like I don't want you to spend your entire life on Facebook like five hours and, and hustling it's like initially to gain traction to build a brand to get results and then when you have money when you have a bit of brand it's easier to to grow then you will start having more like inbound leads like instead of you going to people they will be like hey heard you have results or whatever like I want to learn more, more about what you do then it's like then coming for you to sell them. Uh, it, it's getting easier as you grow. Also, with Facebook groups, you can make it more automated. Like, you can funnel them into the group, then you can have in your group like lead magnets or trainings or webinars that further sell. So, interested in, uh, people that are interested come in the group you funnel them over there and inside you have a training and at the tra end of the training it sells something so that can be really automated as far as okay I, I don't automate or delegate my content creation that's one of the key things that I'm doing and also as far as the conversations I wouldn't automate that either a lot of people are getting burned automating those because this is what's making money, like the actual relationship that you build. So people want this like passive income lifestyle without doing anything. I don't think that's possible when starting out. I think we should build our way up and then as we grow, as you have money now, then you can invest into some assets that will later bring money into more passive sources. But I think our best bet is to go active, make a lot of money and then reinvest it and then as you have a process that works, then you can start thinking about automating and delegating uh, the process. Like, to give an example, when I started selling the my own coaching, I would manual, like I would make a lead generation post, and then, I don't know, people would raise hands that they're interested, so I would go manually add them all into a messenger group, and I would try to agree upon the time with them, then we would jump on a call, then I would manually follow up with them. But now I have all that delivered with messenger bot and email sequence. So mm -hmm. I make a post, they raise hands, and then I'm like, yeah, just opt in here, they get information, uh, they attend the training, they buy or they don't, and then I have the list of people that raise hands that are warm leads, even better if they attended the training, and I know they are already pre-sold on idea, so then they just need a closing so I can go and be like, hey, where are you standing? Have you watched the training? Yeah, did you like it? Yeah. And see what their objections or concerns are and I can just close them. So initially I spent a lot of time on Messenger, but last month I think I spent barely a few hours in total on Messenger and still, still closed a lot of four-figure days and a lot of course beta course sales that is also like a new product still made a plenty of sales over there 
with working less. So, but I found what works, and I'm slowly working towards automating it instead of trying to make it automated again. Like this is why Russell recommends going doing live webinar for a year because every time you learn something new, you get feedback, you get better, and then after a year, you know what works, what, and then you can automate that part, and then you just work on adding traffic because you know that okay, this webinar, if I get 50 people, four will buy. And you know your numbers, and you try to improve them for a year. Then you have like, I don't know, 100 people come to the webinar, 10 buy. Then you can think about like paid traffic and scale and JVs, but mm. not before that. So I'm currently in that process. Like I'm, I'm tweaking it, I'm improving my training every time. And then when I do like, Currently, I want to sell my course. It's still in beta, but I'm still tweaking these trainings. Then I'll do the automated one, and then I'll do the JVL launch with it, and I plan to do like multiple six figures this year with just the course, which isn't going to be even that expensive. Wow, that's cool, man. So um, you mentioned something now that I thought was interesting that I hadn't heard before, that Ru Russell says to do live webinars for a year. So when you, when you say that, you're saying like, you know, you post somewhere like, oh, is anybody interested in a training on how to get leads, whatever, you know, raise your hand if you're interested, and then you fill the webinar that way, and then you do the live webinar. Is that kind of the, the process, or? Partly, because uh, here's the thing. One of the reasons why it's important to build our brand, so if I go now and say, hey, I'm doing live training on this, and first, I've been publishing on Facebook for a year and a half. I earned my way. I built my brand a bit. Like I have following. I have people that know, like, and trust me. I was leading with integrity and ethics, and as people say, I was planting the seeds. So now I can ask for something. But if someone else was just to start out, and you had like I don't know, two hundred friends, and you don't know each other and you just make an offer, chances are you won't get a lot of raised hands. So you need still build that process of growing, building know, like, and trust, providing value to those people. That's one thing. And another thing, the most registrants from my training come from my long form posts. Mm. So I actually dive deep into the current problems they're having, current beliefs they're uh, they are holding. I attack those beliefs, I challenge them to think differently, and then I invite them to my solution, which is the training. Then they attend it, then I explain to them like what I was working, what's working, what wasn't, what realizations I had, and so on and so forth. And at the end, for those interested to learn more, they can join my coaching or my upcoming course. So this is kind of my strategy at the moment. Got it. Um, so, do you think that there's any difference between the niche that you're in, like teaching people making money online through affiliate marketing, roughly stated, right? Are there major differences between that and let's say like a f the fitness niche, helping people lose weight or, um, you know, the dating niche or something like that? Or do you think it's all pretty much the same strategy? Well, I can give you like 100% accurate data on how this exact thing would work in other industries because I haven't seen it, but I can make assumptions. First, it's people, like whether they're interested in making money or losing weight. If you write about their current beliefs and struggles and invite them to a solution, I'm pretty sure they would to raise hands. Like if you talk, hey, are you still sick and tired of trying 10 different diets and still having this these two this extra 20 pounds without any uh, way of removing them and even when you remove and lose like 5 or 10 pounds you come back or you gain even more and that frustrates you because I was there and I was using all these diets but then I ran across something that's quite different but it, it actually helped me lose 25 pounds in 2 months after trying to lose weight for 5 years and I'm actually gonna do like training on how I did it. So if you wanna join me, uh, it's gonna happen, I don't know. I'm gonna do live training this Friday, so feel free to join me over there. So I'm pretty sure that people who want to lose pounds, as well as people who I try to cater my message to, 
if they're interested and if you hit the customer out there, if they are on your friends list, they're gonna raise hands. And mm. then this is just method of delivery. Like I hold a training, it can be other form. I found this one to, to work pretty well. You can hold a training, you can explain, like give them a bit of background and context, like who are you and why are you, uh, why can you talk to them about it? And then proceed to tell them about the solution and portion of them will buy and still this holds true, like if they raise hands, it means that they want to lose weight and they are overweight. So you still have warm leads, even if they don't buy, you can follow up with them in the future and still sell them. So I think, yes, you can use that in other industries too. Got it. All right. Um, so tell us a little bit about your coaching program and uh how do people get involved with you if they want to hear you out and see a little bit about um, how you can help them make some money online? Well, as far as the coaching offer, as I mentioned throughout the interview, it's going to be only for people that do already have higher ticket product and are already using Facebook Organic. So I'm pretty mm. strict as to who I let in. Uh, okay. I wouldn't recommend it if you are, like if someone's listening and they are like, yeah, Facebook organic sounds good and high ticket makes sense. I wouldn't start with my coaching game course. What I would rather do is I would use someone who teaches someone from beginning because I teach someone who already has these things, but then is not having success. Mm. Uh, but I would rather focus on someone who is teaching it from the ground up. Uh, that's one recommendation I would give to people. Okay, and then if people want to see more about what you're doing and what you're involved in, maybe they want to look at your course, do you have a, a link for that where they can go? Is it? I know you said it's in beta, but is it, uh, is it like... Yeah, I, I think the best bet is to for them to either, either just friend add me on Facebook or, and, or join my group, and they will see all the information around the course course and, and coaching and upcoming changes and everything else and I have like a bunch of free content as well so they would benefit without buying course if they don't need it or anything so I think that's the best best place to, to start got it and what's the name of your group uh, na name of the group is affiliate marketing elite elite and I don't know if they can spell me or drink me language but mm -hmm. I assume you will have like a link to my Personal I will. profile as well, and on the personal profile, they can find the group in the bio as well. Okay, cool. So, if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more more about what Mio Drag does, and you want to get some help from him, check out his Facebook group. I will put a link in the description to his personal profile and his group. If you guys have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section, or you can reach out to Mio Drag directly. All right, man. Thank you for coming on the Thank show. You, Much appreciated. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thanks for having me, brother. It was fun. Yep. My pleasure.